I, uh, I promised a present from Santa, and everyone knows a present for Santa stands for APFS, right? Or APFS stands for a present from Santa. So uh, when we were developing our support for uh, APFS, we actually built support into the SleuthKit framework, which was quite a bit of work. Because uh, we also had to add a pool storage layered into uh, SleuthKit. So we will be releasing, uh, as you are watching this presentation, we will be releasing the source code for that so that everyone can have access to parsing APFS, including snapshots and encryptions uh, for free. And uh, we'll be working with Brian to get this upstream into the main uh, sleuth kit repo so we don't have to maintain separate forks because uh, that works for everyone. Uh, now, as more research has been coming out on APFS and more tools have had varying levels of support, we figured, uh, well, if our support's the best, people should, uh, should have access to the best. So we've convinced the managers to allow us to, to release this, and they're happy to do so and give back to the community. So uh, what will you get? Uh, you can fully parse APFS containers, the pools, uh, all the file system data and metadata. So, you know, F FS stat, uh, FLS, ISTAT, all of that, all the normal commands will work completely fine for you. Uh, you have full support for compressed and sparse files. Uh, we support encryption, both the native APFS encryption and the store core storage upgraded. Uh, of course, if you have a T2 system, it's not going to it's not going to work for you unless uh, you know your image has already somehow been decrypted, which will soon be a possibility. And you can parse snapshots, all with your command line TSK tools. For those of you who are interested in in, in using this as a library, which you know a subset of you are, we've had to add a new pool storage layer, uh, which sits between the volume system and the uh, file system layer. And uh, so there are some new new commands uh, or new functions uh, that you would call basically to open up a, a pool. Uh, your existing tools will continue to work without this. This is an optional layer. So if you're not analyzing APFS stuff on your tools, you don't need to use these calls. Um, there's additional calls added to the the file system uh, layer just to open up a pool file system or open up a pool file system uh, that supports encryption where you can give it the password to open the volume. Uh, there are some new dependencies. Uh, C14, we decided to actually implement this stuff in a relatively modern version of the language. So if you're using a really old compiler, uh, you're going to have issues with these patches, but we've, you know, we talked to Brian about it, and he agreed that it's better to have support and and move forward uh, using a, a variant of the language that people are actually want to develop in, rather than having, you know, legacy C++ 1998 style support. Uh, but this might give you potential issues with uh, Pi TSK, which has to use Visual Studio 2008 to get their Python 2.7 support. Um, but I'm, you know, happy to work with Yakim to try to come up with alternate solutions uh, for those bindings. Uh, there is also a new dependency on Open SSL because we're not rolling our own encryption libraries. So if you want the encryption support, you have to use uh, Open SSL. It's a little bit more work to do. Um, you know, you can't just say, imagine that, you know, as of today. You're just going to be able to, you know, plug and play with all your tools. Uh, the command line tools will, will definitely work, but uh, we don't use the Java or the Python bindings, uh, so I haven't updated the Java or the Python bindings. So work from the community is needed for that. Uh, we don't compile with Visual Studio. We've tested the compilation with uh, GCC, Clang, and MinGW, but uh, a little bit of work is going to need for. Visual Studio uh, compatibility. Uh, I'm going to start working on that soon. Uh, but again, help from the community would be great. And then once we have uh, points one and point two done, we want to just push everything upstream and uh, let Brian maintain this for us. So I don't have to keep doing this uh, at night, which would be great. So 
um, I'll go ahead and do a demo. And uh, before I do, I'll just go ahead and put this uh, link up here. If you go to github.com slash blackbagtech, at the time that you're watching this, you should be able to see our fork of the sleuth kit download, compile that, have fun with it. Please send some patches. So, all right. So, um, you know, the first tool that you're pretty much always going to use, we're going to analyze a full disk uh, image today, and it's not going to be encrypted just for simplicity's sake. Uh, and live demo, so please be patient. All right. Oh. What? Oh, yeah. Bin directory. All right. So the MMLS tool has not been changed. You will notice in APFS, you will have one or more physical partitions that are used to concatenate volumes for a logical pool container. So on this image, it happens to be this uh, Macintosh HD, and I don't know why the I is all capitalized in that. That's just kind of how it shipped. That's interesting. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is get the offset of that partition and you know pass it as the O flag, like you're always going to do for, for sleuth get tools. We haven't changed that. But what we have changed is there's a new tool for the new layer, and this is the PSTAT tool. And what the PSTAT tool does is it gives you information about the pool container, right? So you, we're going to use PSTAT, pass it the, that offset of our physical partition, and give it the image name. I'm going to pipe this that less just because it's a little bit easier to read. And what we'll see here is we'll see all kinds of informa uh, information about the pool storage container. You're going to see uh, one or more volumes that happen to be here. So we'll, on the substance that are, I think there are four volumes. It's our main volume racer. A uh, little preview of the files. We've got a preboot volume, a recovery volume, and a virtual machine uh, VM volume. So once you decide which one of these uh, volumes you want to analyze, there's one very important piece of information you need here. You need the APSB, the uh, Apple Super Black. Uh, block number here, which in this case is 243164. And then uh, all of the rest of our tools are going to also need that number. So we just get 40640. And there's this new capital B flag to add that number. And that should be the only changes uh, that you really need to be aware of. And you see here, uh, you know, FSStat works, gives you different information about the specific file system. And one thing to notice here is it will actually list, list snapshots. Uh, some snapshots are, are, are dataless, which means that uh, the file system is only guaranteed to keep the blocks that contain the file system metadata. Uh, the blocks that actually contain the file data may actually be uh, overwritten. So that's one type of snapshot. Um, this other snapshot here is not data list, so it's going to have guaranteed to have all of the data as well as the metadata. So you could use this number to actually parse a snapshot. Uh, but what we'll do is first we're just going to show, you know, a file system listing, you know, FLS, you know, all of this stuff works completely as you would expect with SolidKit. So you know, iStat. You get all your your metadata, your timestamps, all of that good stuff, and you can do iCat and iCat to read the files, files contents, and everything else too. So all of that's great stuff works. Uh, I didn't mention that you have a snapshot. If you notice this number here with a snapshot ID. You can use those same commands. So let's do the file system listing. But if you give it a lowercase s flag, which is a new flag that we've added, that's a snapshot ID. And now what you'll be parsing is the file system at the time of that snapshot. And I guess the only other difference that you're not used to is if it's an encrypted image, there's a lowercase uh, k flag that you would pass and you would just give it the you know the whatever the password happens to be and then again everything will work 
uh, as you're used to with the command line tools. So we hope that this will be useful for investigators in the community. Uh, we'll hope that you will report any bugs and uh, help us get this upstream in the sleuth kit so that you know everybody who uses sleuth kit can have this benefits.